I'm Carlos Domenac, uh, Executive Chairman and CSO of Ability Pharma. We are developing ABTL-012 to treat cancer. It is a first-in-class drug with a unique mechanism of action. It kills cancer cells through autophagy after inhibiting the PI3K, AKT, mTOR pathway and the strong induction of ER stress, uh, reticular stress. The product is efficacious as a standalone treatment and has synergistic effect uh, with chemotherapy and also with anti-PD-1 uh, immunotherapies. We have recently finished a phase one trial, a phase one, two trial um, as first line therapy in endometrial and lung cancer in combination with carboplatin and paclitaxel. In endometrial cancer, the response rate has increased from 51% in historical controls uh, to 66%, so an increase in 16 points. And we have had also a 100% disease control rate, which represents a 25% increase. In lung cancer, the response rate has been almost 50% compared to just 25% uh, in historical controls. Remarkably, the progression-free survival has increased from four uh, to six months, a 45% increase. The study has been conducted in top leading institutions in Spain and France, such as Valdebron Institute of Oncology in Barcelona and the Institute Gustave Rossi in Paris. The next step for the company is to conduct a phase two clinical trial, double blind, placebo control with the product as first line therapy uh, in combination with Holfirinox in pancreatic cancer patients, as, as I commented. Pancreatic cancer is a tremendous um, indication with that it is really an unmet medical need. Due to this, the trial could lead to an accelerated approval by the regulatory agencies, both in the United States and in Europe. We have already the IND approved in the United States, and we will soon have the CTA approved in Spain, uh, France, and Israel. And we foresee that we will be able to start the clinical trial uh, at the end of this year, probably in November. Right now, Ability Pharma is in an important inflection point, um, and the value of the company can increase uh, a lot in the next. Uh, two years due to the results of this pancreatic cancer and the excellent results that we are having, that we have had uh, with endometrial and lung cancer. Uh, so now we think that is uh, uh, the right moment to invest in, in, in the company. In April, uh, we closed a 4 million euros financing round. And this year, we have also obtained a 5 million euros grant from the Horizon 2020 program of the European Commission, specifically in the EIC Accelerator program. Um, of these 5 million, 2.3 are direct grant, non, we don't have to return this money, and the rest is 2.8 million, that is a direct investment of the European Investment Bank in our company. Besides that, two weeks ago, we learned that we have uh, uh, got a grant from the FDA. It's a $2 million grant uh, in the R01 uh, program of the NIH that is managed by the FDA. And also, uh, we have signed a letter of intent with an international pharmaceutical company that will invest $1 million now and $2 million in the next years. To fully finance the trial, now we are looking uh, for additional funding to reach the objective of having the results at the end of 2022. To finish, I want to introduce our experienced management team that has outstanding experience and success in developing drugs uh, in, in multinational companies, in mid-sized companies, and altogether we have more than 150 years of experience of developing drugs in pharmaceutical companies. So thank you very much for your attention.
Could you imagine saving every day a five-year-old kid that wants to celebrate the next birthday? At Gate to Brain, together with Saint Juan de Deu, we will make it happen by improving the delivery to the brain of a chemotherapeutic agent. This delivery, this transport, is the bottleneck to cure these kids that suffer from a pediatric brain tumor. In fact, they lose the battle against the IPG in nine to 10 months after diagnosis. To improve this delivery, to improve this transport to the brain of the drug that can cure these kids, we will use Gate to Brain technology. Our technology has been developing during the last 15 years at IRB and University of Barcelona together with Sandra and Deu. And last July, we created Gate to Brain spin-off. Our technology is based on peptides that are able to cross the blood-brain barrier. What is the blood-brain barrier? Because the brain is one of the more precious and vulnerable organs of our human body, the nature has protected with a wall the blood-brain barrier that prevents the damage of the brain, but it makes it very difficult when we need to treat the brain. How many times we will need to treat the brain? In fact, they say that one every four of us will suffer from a brain disease during our life. The good news is that there are drug candidates for most of these diseases, but many times, in fact, 98% of the times, these drug candidates fail because they cannot cross this barrier. With our technology, these peptides have proof in vivo that they are able to transport across this barrier nanoparticles, small molecules, proteins, and even monoclonal antibodies. Now, we will use our technology to modify the, the chemotherapeutic agent that can help these kids to battle against the IPG. This lead candidate, G2B001, is now at the doors of the preclinical regulatory phase. And the idea is to advance it, if we achieve the funding for that, to advance it to the door of the preclinical assays, to the, the door of the clinical assays in three to four years. For that, we need 2.5 million euros. Once having that, we will have two assets, in fact. We will have the compound for the IPG, that by itself it has a social impact, it has a good value, but also it, we will have the platform more validated. And probably then, this platform can be used for the other rest of the candidates, for those candidates that we will need one every four of us during our life. So we will be able to improve the delivery to the brain. And not only that, by improving the delivery, we can improve, we can give maybe less an amount of compound that we will need to reach the brain. So we will avoid some side effects of the drugs. This we have not done it alone. In fact, we are a team of founders and three institutions that have pushed the technology to make it happen to go the medicines beyond barriers and to help these kids to fight against the IPG. Thanks. Hello, my name is uh, Juan Perez Pilar and I'm Lidarti CEO and I'm here to tell you about our company. Uh, Lidartis is an uh, uh, immunology focused company. As you know, immunology is a medical discipline aimed to destroy the cancers uh, by stimulating the patient's uh, immune system without affecting the, um, the healthy tissues. Uh, so, Lidartis has a, a platform technology named Tranebody, which are by a specific uh, uh, multivalent uh, antibodies. Uh, which have shown in preclinical um, cancer studies a very strong anti-tumor activity, including tumor eradication and long-term anti-tumor uh, uh, memory, uh, uh, similar to a vaccine effect. Um, so, and all this without any toxicity. This is very important because it's what we are adding uh, uh, to the table in terms of uh, competition. Uh, in, from a, an investor perspective, we believe that we might offer uh, an early exit uh, for them um, and we'll talk about that in a minute at the preclinical and um, even better at the clinical stage uh, in terms of valuations. Uh, we do need 1.3 million euros to close a 5 million round syndicated by three very well-known qualified uh, VCs. Uh, and we will uh, use these proceeds to run the first in human uh, trial in patients with advanced cancers. So the uh, trimer body concept is fairly visual and simple. So as I just mentioned, trimer bodies are by specific molecules which uh, on one side bind to the tumor-associated antigen 
and this recruits the immune system, uh, which on the other side the channel body binds to due to the uh, recognition of an immune receptor expressed on the effector cell. Once that this happens, the uh, uh, immune uh, cell fires and destroys uh, the uh, tumor cell without any toxicity. It's very important to uh, bear in mind that this only happens within the tumor microenvironment and no one else. Uh, in terms of patent portfolio, we have a pretty solid uh, um, IP uh, um, uh, situation where we're having we have two patents covering the uh, platform. Uh, so what this means is that uh, we can generate as many uh, candidates uh, or products as we like to in terms of depending upon which tumor specificity we're interested. We also have another patent which covers the uh, mechanism of action, uh, meaning uh, uh, anti-tumor activity without toxicity with trans bodies. And now we just filed uh, the uh, product candidate patent, which would give us 20 years of exclusivity uh, in the future. Um, now, in terms of uh, development plan, it's a three years duration, year number one, uh, would be uh, to uh, test the uh, trimet body in no human primates in a pilot study. If this goes well, then we will go into year number two, which the objective is to get the approval from the uh, medicinal agency to go into humans. And if we get approved, then in year three, uh, we will run the uh, first in human trial uh, in advanced uh, cancer patients. Um, without any therapeutic alternative. Um, so in terms of uh, uh, funding required, uh, 1.4 million euros for year number one, 2.3 million euros for year number two, and 1.3 million uh, for year number three. All these leverage with the 2 million euros uh, uh, non-dilutive public funding. Uh, so overall, we truly believe that we offer investors uh, a uh, good opportunity to join this VC syndicate at this point. And uh, the reason is we uh, think that might have an early exit for these investors at the preclinical stage where uh, upfronts anywhere from 30 to 50 million uh, euros uh, plus masters and royalties uh, have been recently disclosed. Uh, uh, at the clinical stage, the valuation of similar companies are within the 150 to 250 million range. So uh, we think that at this point with artists is a great opportunity uh, to invest in. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, are uh, more than happy to take any questions that you might have. Lensdestem Biotech is a company specialized in advanced therapies. Our main objective is to develop new technologies to improve the safety and efficacy of CAR T cells. Nowadays, there are many types of cancer that do not respond to conventional treatments and become refractory with a dismal outcome for these patients. In recent years, immunotherapy has become a promising alternative, especially the life drug CAR T cells. Immunotherapy is based in the enhancement of our defenses against cancer cells. The immune cells from a cancer patient are obtained from the blood and are genetically modified to become CAR T cells with enhanced anti-tumor activity. These CAR T cells are then transplanted back to the patient to find and kill tumor cells. Even though CAR T cell therapies have raised many expectations, there are still hurdles to overcome. They are effective mainly in blood tumors, but around 40% of those patients do not respond. They are not effective in solid tumors, and finally, they can produce severe side effects. Current CAR T cell therapies are only transient, as CAR T cells lose their antitumoral activity over time. With our old technology, we have increased the efficacy of current CAR T therapies by preventing their loss of activity and expanding their lifespan making it possible for CAR T cells to kill cancer cells for a longer period of time. On the other side, CAR T cells have not yet been used successfully used to treat solid tumors. With our Lenton Plus technology, we can provide CAR T cells with new weapons to recognize and kill solid tumors in a controlled and regulated way. Lentestem Biotech is located in Henio. 
a research center of excellence in the technological park of Granada in Spain. Our company was created in 2016, and until 2019, we have focused in the development and acquisition of our patents and licenses. In 2019, we were awarded a Neotech project and an industrial PhD fellowship. In 2020, we obtained the PIME Innovadora certificate, and we have been shortlisted in several funding events. As a technology-based company focused on R&D, our business model is to start from a proof of concept. Demonstrate using preclinical assays and clinical trials its ability to improve and enhance current CAR T cell therapies. And with these results, enter into the market by selling our licenses to big pharmaceutical companies. With our all technology, we are finishing the preclinical phase and we need funding to finish the validation process and develop the clinical trials. Regarding our Lenton Plus technology, we are in the phase of proof of concept with promising results. The market in CAR T cell therapies is undergoing an exponential growth with a market projection of reaching 3 billion US dollars by 2022. And it's in this market where we can find our business opportunities. The technologies developed by Lentestin Biotech will complement and improve current CAR T cell therapies. So we see ourselves as allies rather than competitors of the top leaders in this sector. Finally, I want to highlight that Dentistem Biotech is composed of a multidisciplinary team with experience in business management and powerful scientific core, helped by external advisors in our field of expertise. So thanks a lot for your attention, and we will be available for one-to-one -one meetings during the event, so please contact us if you have any questions. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, you, thanks for your attention today. I'm Luis Ruiz, CEO of Leucos Biotech, and uh, today I will share with you our first-in-class safe oral daily compound program for acute myeloid leukemia and other cancer malignancies, but today I will focus on acute myeloid leukemia. The question that we want to solve the admin need is very clearly defined in this slide here, in which we can share with you that the data that over the last 40 years there has not been significant changes in the five year survival rate of this disease. And this is particularly. Uh, particularly re remarkable in this population, 70% of the patients that cannot receive a transplantation, which is the only curative way, and this population, the rate of survival after five years is, is between five to 10%. So it's a really huge and med medical need that despite the fact that the market is growing and is growing and is projected to be $2.2 billion driven by new compounds, that are coming in the pipelines that are addressing personalized targeted uh, populations with specific mutations even though these these uh, molecules are very sophisticated and really work well or relatively well in in, in, in the target population they're not solve the problem they're only addressing a very small amount and in the long term their efficacy is still in doubt so what we have now is the opportunity of address this disease with oral molecule that add upstream of current validated pathways with a very high therapeutic windows and with a strong preference with, for clonogenic leukemia cells. This is the molecules that we have in our pipeline right now. These uh, molecules have the opportunity for us to increase the feed population, to lower the hospital cost, to expand the patient base, to reduce oral lapses, and overall to increase the five-year survival rate. We have already selected our first uh, preclinical candidate. We are targeting the end of 2021 to start a clinical program, first in man, and uh, we are now creating awareness of our program uh, and this uh, particular project uh, because at the end of 2021, we will need to raise significant amount of money in around A in order to address the clinical development program. Just to share with, with you some results, we have shown proof of concept at the clinical level, both in xenograph uh, uh, models with a number of with three or different advanced leads and of course with our candidate at the same level that standard of care and also in orthotopic models of the disease 
autotopic movement means that the, the cancer grows in the place that is supposed to grow. And in these models, we also have shown that our, model, our molecules are as potent or even more potent, more efficacious than the standard of care. So if we want to change the paradigm or the current paradigm in acute myeloid leukemia, please talk to us because we have this opportunity starting the end of next year. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Monse Cano, CEO of Nanologen. Nanologen is a drug discovery company focused on the development of CXCR4 based cytotoxics to stop and reverse metastasis. Metastasis is a clear, clear and met need in oncology. Our first entry indication is metastatic colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer type worldwide. And in fact, metastasis is the responsible for recurrences and deaths of 90% of patients. Current treatments are focused on, on uh, const uh, current treatments are focused on the constraint of the primary tumor, but not on metastasis. The TXCR4 receptor is a validated target in oncology. And in fact, cancer cells expressed in the receptor are responsible for metastasis dissemination. The CXL4 receptor is expressed in 23 metastatic cancers in an extended subpopulation of patients, above 40%, and it correlates with tumor aggressiveness and poor prognosis. Our therapeutic approach is a targeted chemotherapy for this subset of patients. Our drug is able to selectively kill the CXCR4 positive cells. How does that? How does it work? It's a protein based on a conjugate formed by a human protein scaffold covalently bound with a cytotoxic drug on one side and a CXCR4 ligand on the other. The whole protein conjugate is able to self-assemble forming nanoparticles. And those nanoparticles directly bound to the receptor on the cell membrane and they are internalized in the cell. Once inside the cell, the cytotoxic drug is delivered and the cancer cell is killed. So this is leading us to a selective killing of metastatic cells, tumor cells, without toxicity. We have proven this approach in several animal models and our data in colorectal cancer shows that more than 80% of the animals are free of metastasis after treatment. And in those animals that they did show metastasis, the drug treatment potentially reduced the total number of metastatic forces. In another animal model of regression of metastasis, the drug treatment also affects a clear reduction of metastatic force number. And very importantly, in all these efficacy studies, there is a lack of toxicity in normal tissues. Who is who at Nanologen? Nanologen is a spin-off from academia, two academic groups. And we are glad to have uh, on board three of our co-founders from there. Antonio Villaverde and Esther Vázquez from the Nanobiotechnology Group and Ramon Bangas from the Anti-Tumor Group. The fourth co-founder and chairman is Manuel Rodríguez, who is an entrepreneur with an extensive experience in the biotech and pharma industry, and myself with more than 15 years of experience in pharma companies as well. Our aim is to reach phase one clinical trial in 2023. And for this, we are raising the first 1.1 million as a reach for a tranche of 3.6 million to achieve clinical trial authorization status. This is a substantial investment opportunity with the following main headlines to have in mind. This is a disruptive technology of selective targeting based on drug protein nanoparticles. Our first preclinical candidate is for metastatic colorectal cancer with high efficacy, stopping and reversing metastasis and no toxicity. We have other preclinical leads at a similar, similar preclinical level for lymphoma and leukemia. So this is a large pharmaceutical market ahead. So if you like what you have heard so far, please get in touch. Thank you.
there are about 300,000 cases of new uh, diagnosed with cancer, kids and adolescents that are diagnosed with cancer every year. We're talking about 90,000 deaths per year. And unfortunately, even though, you know, there've been a lot of efforts, uh, especially from the philanthropic world, only four drugs has been approved for pediatric cancer in the last 25 years. Fortunately, we are experiencing a momentum on pediatric cancer. There's a lot of incentives from different kind of governments and institutions. And I want just to highlight especially one new law that has been approved in the US that is called the RAISE, uh, which is uh, forcing every existing company, every existing pharmaceutical company, biotech company to test the drugs on children, whether there is a proof that it could be the same mechanism of action. So from now on, every company in the US is forced to test the drug they are developing for adults for children. So uh, pediatric cancer is a, is a small market, is a niche market, but we're talking about to five, between five to $10 billion uh, market per year. So uh, unfortunately, there is also a lot of uh, compounds in biopharmas and, and, and pharmaceutical companies that could cure um, pediatric cancer. And this is the reason that we decided to launch Oncoheroes Bioscience, which is the first company in the world specialized 100% to develop new drugs for pediatric cancer. So we aim to be uh, a company, um, a global company. So our headquarters is based in Boston, but we do have a subsidiary 100% owned by the headquarters based in Barcelona, where we have our own drug discovery lab. Our strategy is pretty simple. The way we're planning to build our pipeline is by doing two things. First of all, we're planning to develop our own drugs uh, while the rest of the team is identifying potential candidates, existing assets from other companies and trying to license and, and build our pipeline. So. Um, ideally, you should see Onco Heroes as a um, mini pharma company uh, with the potential and the determination to become one of the main players in the world to develop and commercialize new drugs for pediatric cancer. Um, the team is formed by um, experts from the industry. So even though we are a startup, we started two years ago. The company, uh, the team that is you know, working in our company comes from the pharma industry with more than 20 years experience. We are extremely well connected uh, with um, key European leaders on pediatric cancer everywhere in the world. Uh, one of the main reasons is that we have such a good connections is because two of the lead founders, including myself, we are parents affected by child cancer. My son was diagnosed with uh, uh, one of the most aggressive pediatric cancer two years ago. That was, sorry, nine years ago. And this, this is the reason that I decided to devote myself to fight against child cancer. So. So we've been more than 10 years working on connecting us with, uh, with the most advanced uh, research centers in the world. Again, QP need this on pediatric cancer and everybody is really supporting what we're doing here because they've been waiting for this. They've been waiting to see the first company in the world specialized in developing new drugs for pediatric cancer. Uh, we are the only one company, as far as we know, doing this. I mean, just building a multi-asset pipeline for pediatric cancer, because we focus on that. It is true there are other companies with secondary programs on pediatric cancer, but this is not the main mission they're doing. So we are a mission-driven company. Um, we're currently building our pipeline with, uh, with four assets. So we're planning to develop, uh, we are developing our own for assets for uh, medulloblastoma, which is one of the most aggressive pediatric brain cancer in the world. We're planning to have a first asset ready to go to preclinical phase by the end of 2021. And meanwhile, we are building the rest of the pipeline, uh, the pipeline in less than three other assets, uh, clinic ready. So uh, the good news is that we've got the first one on board. So uh, this is an asset that was developed for Beringer, uh, Ingelheim for adult leukemia. And, and now we will, we've got the, the opportunity to license the asset worldwide and for all indications. So we're moving forward the asset to phase 1B, phase 2, a clinical trial for rhabdomyosarcoma. sarcoma. So the good news also is like Bolasertib was granted two weeks ago with a, a designation by the FDA that it's called rare pediatric disease designation, which is giving us the opportunity to, to access to many different type of um, incentives. So I would say to summarize, we are uh, currently raising capital in order to execute um, our plan, which is again, building, finalize the building of our pipeline for assets ready to go to clinic and and just uh, prepare the company for the major milestone for the next year. Everybody knows that breast cancer is still a big problem. Despite the effort to find solution for these women, still one woman dies for this disease every minute. That means that just today, 1,440 women will succumb to the disease. 
This is because 30% of these patients don't respond to current treatments or go back to the clinic with a disease month of year after, after they thought they were cured. But why is that? Why is it still a problem? If we look inside the tumor and how this tumor is formed, we can identify that not all the cancer cells are the same. There is a fraction of cancer cells that evolve to bypass the effect of current drugs. Those cells we call drug-resistant cancer cells. At Donena Medicine, we have found a way to specifically stop the growth of these drug-resistant cancer cells. The scientific discovery of Onena was done at the Stanford University by my co-founder, Githa Lobo, and I. We use state-of-the-art techniques to allow us to identify how these drug-resistant cancer cells specifically secrete some factors that endow them with their immortality or regeneration potential. At Onena Medicines, we have developed a lead antibody candidate which is able to block these factors and thus stop the drug-resistant cancer cells of growing in the most aggressive breast cancer type that is called the triple negative breast cancer. Recently, we have filed a patent to protect our decomposition of our minimal variable product and its use in different diseases, including cancer. During this year and a half that Onena has been open, we have been able to assemble a team of scientists and veterans biotech entrepreneurs, which will help us to lead the way to success. We are looking to raise 1.5 million of seed found by June 2021. We are looking to interact with different diseases that invest in early biotech, early stage biotech companies and know further about their criteria in order to become part of their portfolio. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Hi, I am Judith Camargo, CEO and founder of Roca Furedada. We are talking to you from our office in Barcelona in Entrepreneur Center of Barcelona Activa. Roca Furedada was founded in March 2019 and it aims to contribute to the prevention of skin conditions caused by ultraviolet radiation, especially skin cancer. We are focused on the development of solar filters, which typically make up 20 to 30 percent of sun creams and are the active ingredients which provide protection from UV radiation. At present, the global annual turnover of solar filter business is $1.8 billion US dollars. And that figure is expected to rise due to the increasing consciousness of skin cancer by the consumers and also the extended use of UV filters in cosmetic applications such as UV creams, makeup, and lipsticks. Roca has developed a range of smart UV filters which unlike the usual solar filters and the ones that are currently available in the market adapt to the ambient level of UV radiation like polarized sunglasses do. Furthermore, our smart UV filters are up to six times more efficient, non-toxic for humans and environmentally friendly. These properties have been established both through our own research as well as third-party validation, including a leading multinational corporation in the chemical sector, which decided to invest in our business after studying Roca's patents. Our business model is B2B market, and our main potential clients are sunscreen manufacturers and cosmetic ingredient distributors. And they are also a potential exit strategy for our investors. Our product will be shipping sometime between the fourth quarter 2021 and the first quarter 2022. Since the company inception in March 2019, Roca has raised about 1 million euros in public and private funding. And we are presently looking for a partner that would help us to consolidate the development of our business plan. That is why we are looking to raise a further 1.5 million euros worth of capital. Our team 
right now is comprised of eight people, a CFO, five researchers, one administrative support, and myself. If you would like more information about that, about Roca, we have an information memorandum, which we will be delighted to send you. Needless to say, we will be equally happy to meet you personally or have a Zoom or a telephone conversation. Thanks for your time. I hope you will be interested in our project.